So I finished out the day with two more films, and then I'm going to go to bed, I swear. Um, both of these films were not well received when they were initially released. Both of these films, I think, are far better uh, films than they get a credit for being, and I think you should just watch them, um, regardless of what anybody says, including myself, but just watch these movies. They delighted me. The first one is Sanaa Hamri's Just Right from 2010. I love Sanaa Hamri forever and ever and ever because Something New is one of my all-time favorite movies. I love that film. Um, I discovered that film maybe four years ago, and I have seen it so many times since then. Um, Just Right is another sort of amazing comedy. It's not quite as, as politically charged as Something New um, or sociologically charged. I don't know. Um, but it's still a really great sort of sports meets romantic comedy. Um, and there are very many of those. Like, this would make a nice pairing with Love and Basketball, except Love and Basketball is really a romantic drama and this is a romantic comedy. But otherwise, similar sort of methodologies in the filmmaking. Um, in this case, it stars Queen Latifah as Leslie Wright, a physical therapist whose um, god sister Morgan, played by Paula Patton, I always loved seeing Paula Patton in a good movie, um, is has dreams of becoming a NBA trophy wife. So they go to games together, uh, Queen Latifah dressed like a fan, and Paula Patton dressed like a woman on the prowl. Um, they both kind of have a thing for uh, the head guy of the New Jersey Nets, Scott McKnight, played by Common. Common is so fine. It's hard to look at Common, to be honest, because he's he's so beautiful. Um, and in this movie, he's so beautifully photographed that you even like see the freckles on his on his bridge of his nose. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, she meets him at a gas station. They hit it off, but he's an idiot. So he invites her to his uh, birthday party, at which point he idiotly falls for the trap that Paula Patton's character has set up. Shenanigans ensue. He gets injured on the game and might have to retire. And so Queen Latifah, being a physical therapist, comes in and saves the day. Obviously, it hits a lot of rom-com, um, you know, beats. But what I liked about it was, one, Queen Latifah is so wonderful on screen and she can do any role. She can literally do any role and you buy it. She is such a good actress. Um, two, like I said, I love seeing Paula Patton in a good film and her her character doesn't is, in a, is a little cliched, but she manages to almost make you care about the character and I think that's because Paula Patton really brings um, just a fresh energy to the screen. And then last but not least, Common is so good. He's charming. You buy him as like this nice guy who's a little, just a little dumb. Um, and, and he gets to be really vulnerable when he thinks he's losing um, everything he's worked for. And those moments are great. And then the moments where Latifah's character is just like, nah. And, and you know, gets him to, to see that he's more than just who, than just a ball player is, is lovely. And they have great chemistry together. Um, when they're sort of discovering that they have so much in common, those moments are lovely. Um, and then also, lastly, um, the moms are played by Pam Greer and Felicia Rashad, so it's always nice to see them, as well as James Pickens Jr. from Grey's Anatomy as Queen Latifah's father, who's always trying to help her restore her home, but he seems to be doing more damage than good. It's just a fun sort of old-school romantic comedy in a, a vein that they don't make anymore. Like, 2010 sort of the end of when they started making these, like, 10 to 20 million romantic comedies. They don't really make those anymore, and it's a bummer because I really love these kind of movies. Um, I want to see more of them. Grr. And then the other film that I watched was, oh, that was on, um, I rented that one, so you can rent that one. The other one I watched was on Netflix, and this is Mira Nair's Kama Sutra, A Tale of Love. It was not well received when it was released. It was, it, However, it did win a cinematography award at the Independent Spirit Awards. I believe it was major, majorly mismarketed. Obviously, it's named Kama Sutra, so people think it's a sex movie, and they play that up in all the posters, they play it up in the in the trailers, 
And in every single blurb, it's the, it says that the plot is the two girls become sexual rivals when they hit maturity. That is literally not the plot. That is not the plot. The plot, I mean, okay, bare bones, that's the plot. But that's really, really, really not the plot. It's about two girls who grow up. One is a princess. One is not a princess. Um, but they had a nursemaid that they shared, and so they kind of grew up together. And she, get, the princess, played by Sarita Chowdhury, gets married off to this horrible, horrible prince played by Naveen Andrews. However, she starts, as she gets older, she gets a little jealous of, of the talents of her um, friend, who in grown version is played by Indira Varma. So they have a little bit of, like, rivalry, as, as any two close girlfriends know happens. Um, in order to get back at her, she sleeps with the prince before they get married. She's just being a bitch, basically. However, the ramifications of this, she had no idea. And she gets kicked from the kingdom, and the Srutachari character just feels incomplete. And then, but also because of that, but also because she's being treated like property, literally called property by her husband, and essentially raped. And it's not presented in any manner other than this man basically raped his wife. Not basically, raped his wife. And she was never taught how to be a sexual creature, even though she was expected to solely provide heirs. Whereas the other woman, she runs off, she um, falls in love with a, a sculptor, but at the same time, she realizes that he's kind of a fuckboy and kind of gives him the time of day. But also, at one point, she goes to um, see a bunch of men at a brothel, and the, the like prince guy comes and literally buys like a 12-year-old virgin to have sex with. And she is just like, what the fuck? And the whole movie is basically showing, this is set in 16th century India, the whole movie is basically showing how this civilization and this section of it was built upon male desire and male sexuality and women as property. And the main character played by Indira Varma, her name's Maya, she basically learns like this is all fucking bullshit and rebels against it. And at one point um, decides, like, to just fuck all these men and she's going to learn how to, like, please them in order to, like, psychologically fuck them up. And um, it's lovely and amazing. And then at one point she finally gets to, like, talk to spoilers. She finally gets to talk to her friend and, like, apologize and be like, I didn't mean to do what I did and you need to stop, like, thinking that your entire life revolves around this stupid man. And then she helps her, like, get a better life. And it's, it's great, and I think the movie really needs, like, one, way more women needed to review it. Two, it needs a critical reevaluation re just in general because everyone often goes to see movies based on, on the marketing. And, and I understand because I'm a marketer that marketing has to sell a product, and it's really hard, even in, like, Riot Girl 1997, to sell, like, a sex movie that's actually more of a feminist, like, twist on on history and sexuality like that's hard to sell whereas just a, like here's boobs and Kama Sutra and positions is really easy to sell and so everyone expects one movie and got a completely different movie that is really about like the power of women the power of women's sexuality and the weakness of men and I think nobody in 1997 wanted the weakness of men and it really reminded me of a lot of films that Jane Campion used to make well she still makes um, and how there was this one reviewer that basically said that Jane Campion hates men because of the way that she predict, uh, presents them in film. And I laughed and laughed and laughed when I read that because I love Jane Campion. And she doesn't present men as if she hates them. She just presents men honestly. And unfortunately, cinema has been made by men for so long that even, like, shitty men are presented um, as as something far greater than they really are. And a lot of these these female directors come in and they're like, here's a mirror of how shitty you really are. Like, look at it. And I think men don't want to see that. And so they um, kind of reject these movies. That was a lot. I, I, I feel like I need to go to bed now. But um, this movie is messy, but the, the really what it is trying to do and what it mostly accomplishes is so much better than I think it's given credit for being. And um, I urge you to seek it out if you, like, want to see something really kind of radical and revolutionary and wonderful. Um, 
and sex positive. <sighs> Go Mira Nair. She needs like a critical reevaluation just in general. Um, because most people think of just Monsoon Wedding, I think at this point in her career, and maybe Slum Bombay. And she has so many great films and so many great documentaries. And she's just fucking great. Um, Viva Maria, uh, Maria, Mira Nair. She's, she's, oh, she's good. She's really good. <sighs> okay. I'm done. Um, so I watched a lot of movies today. Uh, this video was on, I already forgot. Um, Sana Hamri's Just Right and Mira Nair's Kama Sutra, A Tale of Love. Both good films, both different kind of films, both films worth seeking out. Keep watching films by women. There are so many of them. There are so many of them coming out currently, and there's so many of them in the past, and you just need to watch them because they're great, and it will give you a re um, invigorated love of cinema. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. Have a good night.